Welcome back, Warrior Fam. Yay. I'm so excited you're here with us this and every week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. love when you do mm-hmm mm-hmm. after I say that. Mm-hmm. You always, you, mm-hmm. you like, you go back and forth between like your responses. And I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. It comes organically. None of it right. is planned. <laughs> no plans. I like it. It I felt just organic. feel it and it makes a sound that feel that expresses my feelings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it mm. feels like an affirmation of like what we're doing. Yeah. I like it. I like it. All right, warriors. So it is part four of our mm-hmm. mundane anxiety series. <laughs> <laughs> mundane anxiety is... There you go. It it's only a mundane episode if you hear Abby do our impromptu sting yeah. for mundane anxieties. <laughs> so that's how you know it's legit warriors. Mm-hmm. All right. So today's mundane topic is talking about the anxiety and the overthinking that comes with tattooing mm-hmm. and piercings. Oh yeah. yeah oh so yeah. Like, you may not have any experience with this out there. Maybe if you do. This will be a great one for you. If you don't have tattoos or um, piercings or never did. Yeah. But maybe you're interested in those things. Maybe this is a good one for you. And if you don't have any interest and you've never had these things before, maybe you just want to hear how it shows up in us. Yeah. Or maybe you just want to hear terrible stories about what happened when maybe we got some piercings and tattoos that uh, we weren't ready for. (laughs) We're not ready for like now that, that gives me so many thoughts, like ready. Like they said, you're ready. And then you weren't ready. And then they tattooed you or they pierced you because piercings are much faster, obviously. Or like you weren't ready because you were kind of young or shouldn't have made a snap decision about. Yeah. That. Uh, more the latter. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it, I feel like it really requires the story to give the experience. I can't wait. Oh, okay. All Am right, I just so going to dive it. right in? I'm yeah, just girl. Do it. Okay. Do it. All right. So growing up, okay, I got the message that tattoos were extremely unprofessional, right? And people should, you know, not get tattoos. Um, and then also growing up, I got the message that like girls get their ears pierced. But I was also terrified of needles. Terrified. Like, I think I broke a couple like nurses, like, like fake nails when I was a kid, when they were trying to give me shots. Mm. I just remember one woman being like, my nail broke. And I was like, not my problem. Maybe you shouldn't be trying to give me a shot. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Maybe get a new job. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Don't be giving kids shots. What do you expect? If you don't want to lose a finger. Yeah. Nail. Nail. Finger nail. (laughs) Finger nail. Yeah. I didn't like take her finger off. Um, That would have been so badass. (laughs) I mean, that, I mean, I should have gone into a different profession then if I'm ripping off grown ups fingers as a child. (laughs) Um, So, so, but I always, I always was like, had resentment towards my parents because they didn't get my ears pierced when I was an infant Mm. so that I had to get my ears pierced at like, I think I got them around like 11 or 12, right? Like it was later. I don't think I was over, I was definitely over the age of 10. Right. So I had to do it and I had to like push through the discomfort as opposed to like, you know, as a baby, just traumatizing me, you know, (laughs) so (laughs) damn it, mom and dad, why didn't you traumatize me as an infant? Yes. And I always had that. And like my friends had their ears pierced. And then I had to make the decision. Do I want them to pierce both my ears at once or one at a time? And I just, I mean, I, to this day, remember like, the dread. I think one time, I think one time, if I'm remembering correctly, they got it to the, um, the, uh, pen marks on my ears and I chickened out and I was like, and I guess it's not chickened out, but I decided it wasn't right for me then. And we left. Right. Right. And then at some point I went back and I got my ears pierced. But so for me, like the message was, you know, if you want to be a professional, whatever that means, don't have tattoos. And, um, girls get their ears pierced and that was it. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I remember like, you know, growing up, I would see people get like a second hole in their ear or sometimes their nose would be pierced. And sometimes like an eyebrow would be pierced. And I was like, Oh, wait a second. Like these things are kind of cool. Right. So when I went to college, I decided I might as well just pierce everything. Right. (laughs) 
<laughs> and oh, yeah, I'm, that's as one does. <laughs> I'm lightly exaggerating, but like I got my eyebrow pierced. It looked pretty cool. I got some compliments from it, you know, this and that. But being a college kid, um, I don't think I was exactly ready to like do the upkeep with an eyebrow ring. Right. Mm. Yeah. So I remember it like being infected at one point and stuff, but I kept it for a while. I had a cute little barbell in. I loved it. And then I decided, well, you know, if I'm in college and I have all this freedom, I might as well, you know, get my tongue pierced. So I got my tongue pierced, which even now I'm like, how the heck did I do that? I can't, Honestly. I can't imagine me doing it now. I can't. Oh God. And the only reason at the time when I finally did take it out, which was like two years later, three years later. And like, I got people made comments about my tongue piercing. Like, you know, what do you, what do you think that says about you? And I was like, yeah, uh, it says I'm freaking brave trying something new. Right. (laughs) Like it says I wanted this. And so I got it. Yeah. Right. It says I have impulsivity (laughs) issues. (laughs) (laughs) What's it to you? Yeah. (laughs) Um, but so I remember I was like catering and in catering, you weren't allowed to have any piercings. So at that point I had a tongue piercing an eyebrow piercing and a nose piercing, and I had to take them all out. And it was only the nose that I, I still wanted to put back in at the end of session. So at that Mm -hmm. point, my eyebrow closed up and my tongue closed up. Um, but so when I was saying like not being ready for piercings, right. Um, it was my belly button piercing which I can't remember the order. I think the belly button happened. I think the belly button happened actually before the tongue, but after the eyebrow. So I thought, you know, okay, I got my eyebrow. I was fine. You know, so I'm, I'm back home. This is like definitely during college, but I'm back home. So I'm like in my like 18, 18 ish. And I'm with a friend and she had had her belly button pierced and we're like, all right, let's go to the like tattoo and piercing place. And we go there and they're like, hey, so if you let our, what's it called? Intern, not intern, temp. What's it called? The uh, apprentice. I was going to say that both of those sound right, but apprentice. That's apprentice. It. If yeah. you let our apprentice pierce you, oh God, you only have to pay for the jewelry. Oh and I was like, that sounds like a great idea. Oh my God. Oh no. Oh God. So. They get me all ready. <laughs> oh no. And um the apprentice midway through piercing my <gasps> belly button hesitated. Oh god. And so he had to then like wiggle it through and I'm there breathing like uh, oh my god this is the worst decision I've ever made in my life. Oh my god. At that point. And then when I sat up, I was extremely lightheaded and almost fainted and they gave me a free soda. Oh. Yeah. Congratulations so, on that it, free soda. <laughs> I needed was it worth it? <laughs> <laughs> but so when I say wasn't prepared, yeah. I might have been more prepared if it was not a professional. Yeah. 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 So lesson learned there. Right. But then for my, I think it was, I think it was my 21st birthday. I think it was, it had to be. Um, Maybe it was my 22nd, maybe, because I know that I had gone out drinking. So it was, a, I, I was in the legal drinking age, right? right. And um, Claudia and I went out and I'm totally going to throw Claudia under the bus for this. <laughs> <laughs> so we went out partying, right? And then like the next day we were pretty hungover. And you know, Claude's like, you know, what do you want to do for your birthday? And I was like, I don't know. And Claude was like, maybe I'll get a nose ring because I had already had one. And I was like, maybe I'll get a tattoo. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) So I've never had a tattoo before at this point. And um, Claudia had and her tattoo. So cliche, horribly embarrassing. Like, oh, God, what is it? She got the butterfly with the Chinese symbol for oh earth <laughs> oh. on her lower back. Oh my, of course the, yeah. the tramp stamp. I hate that term, but it, that's right. It was like when we were yeah. in the, in the nineties and early two thousands, that was like where everybody got tattooed yeah. and, and it was labeled Chinese symbols and butterflies. So I think Did she, she also got- get one of those like <laughs> 
what was it like the barcode you know what i'm talking about what the like the tribal the tribal yeah. tattoos yeah no i think so popular i think she then. ended up getting rid of her tattoo i'm pretty sure she oh. like, lasered that yeah Got um <laughs> so bad so so i was like all right i should get a tattoo and then it was like well what it, should it be and then i like decided since I had some family from Ireland that it probably should be in Gaelic. <laughs> probably should be, obviously, obviously should be Gaelic. <laughs> and I was working on the ability to like trust, trust myself, trust others, trust the greater picture. And I had found this word. I have no idea how, because we didn't have like cell phones and, you know, <laughs> Google apps. I had found the word Muinen, <laughs> which means confidence in faith <laughs> or confidence okay. and trust. So all of a sudden, my other friend just shows up and we're like, hey, I think I'm going to go get a tattoo. And she's like, hey, you want me to design it for you? And I'm like, OK. Oh, God. Does so she, she design tattoos for a living? No. no. Oh, my God, Abby. You were 21. <laughs> I was 21 or 22. Okay. I was, yeah. So um, so she designed it and we go to the tattoo shop. Now, I am pretty <laughs> Sure. I stunk of alcohol. Like, oh my God, I am pretty sure. And I feel like they should have asked me, Hey, have you had anything to eat or drink today? Yeah. And if you haven't, maybe today is not the right day for a tattoo. So Claudia and my other friend had both had had tattoos. They're like, you're going to be fine. You just lay there and breathe and blah, 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 blah. Okay. So I'm laying there and I'm breathing, but I am like so scared. I am so scared. Like I Wait, where is this tattoo? On my lower back. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. In the same spot in the middle lower back? <laughs> well, like across. Okay. Cuz it says Muinen. <laughs> Got it? Yes. <laughs> Go on. And they had quoted me to be like 50 bucks. And halfway through the tattoo, I wake up to the smelly stuff. <laughs> Oh my God. Because I fainted. <laughs> you were just like, what? I'm here. Yes. Yes. And like that smelly stuff wakes you up. And then I got sick. Throw up. <laughs> and I, I'm not even going to tell you what happened, but I had to go in the bathroom where the people were able, the bathroom was right next to the tattoo spot. Like everyone knew what was happening. Yeah. Oh, no. And then I had to go back out and get the rest of my tattoo. Oh my God. And so then, do you, did you pass out from the pain? You think? I don't know. I mean, did I pass out because you I were drunk? You didn't drink and I was yeah. hung over from it. Did I pass out from the pain or the idea of how horrible it was going to be or that I wasn't breathing or, and apparently this is not a common thing that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that you use the word apparently it's not a common thing <laughs> like I as mean, if you know something you'd heard otherwise yeah I mean <laughs> it wasn't until I spoke to a friend with a lot of tattoos and had friends that like owned a tattoo parlor and I shared the story he was like oh my god that like never happened oh god yeah wow yeah so those were all like induced anxiety stories, but I also wasn't prepared at the time. I think yeah. that, you know, you know, maybe like, um, maybe some like grown ups could have stepped in, not my parents, because I would have never listened to them, but maybe the tattoo parlor shop owner could have been like, yeah, hey, you smell hungover. <laughs> Let's try yeah. this another day. Yeah, this isn't this. I mean, like, I'm pretty sure it's actually illegal to tattoo someone when they're drunk. I was like, I guess if you don't ask, I mean, this was a long time ago already. Mm -hmm. So maybe things were things have changed. <laughs> the These shops have evolved, maybe, maybe. Gotten stronger restrictions for when and how they can tattoo a person. They definitely but, charged oh me one hundred and fifty dollars instead of fifty. <laughs> to be honest with when you said how long it is, fifty would have been very cheap. <laughs> I mean, but we're talking about like early 2000s. Yeah, like, but still. Yeah. I still it feel was, like. It was supposed to just, it was supposed to just be a quick little. Okay. Squibble, scribble of. Weed. But it wasn't. 
Well, because then I fainted and they had to use their faint stuff. And then I was in the bathroom for a long enough time. Like Claudia still laughs about that to this day. <laughs> oh my God. I had to come out of the bathroom. just like, And then finish this tattoo. And then finish the tattoo. God. But what I, what I will say is that since then, I have had another tattoo. It's a very special tattoo. And and although I was anxious getting it because again, um, I don't like needles. Um, I did my extended exhale practice and I didn't faint Woo. and it happened really quick. And I got charged exactly what I was quoted and <laughs> <laughs> so many wins. It was a lot of wins after that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. And it's like, you know, I mean, this conversation was inspired about talking to Ryan about how tattoos are a form of self-care from him. Yeah. And in my second tattoo, which is the tattoo I love, it's like right on my wrist. I love it. Um, that one was like me being able to like tell my nervous system, like I can be calm under pressure. I can be cool. I can, I got this. I can handle this. Right. right? Cause my first one basically was like, no, you can't handle this. Yeah. Well, you also <laughs> were in- inebriated. So. <laughs> You had zero I mean, chance for any kind of self-regulation. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't give yourself a fighting chance. Yes. Um, my earlier tattoos and piercings came from a place of impulsivity. Yeah. <laughs> and as an adult now, I can see it as a form of like self-care and, and yeah. supporting self-regulation. And, and, you know. How old were you when you got the second tattoo? Um, 35, 36. So more recently, really recently, yeah. I, yeah. I knew about your wrist tattoo, but like, you know, I didn't remember when, how old you were when you yeah. got it. So it makes sense. Right. It's like, you're in a totally different place in your life. Yes. Don't regret that control. one. Right. Don't have anxiety over that one. I mean, I sometimes oftentimes forget I have a lower back tattoo until someone <laughs> reminds me and then like, I'm oh, just yeah, that's like, back there. <laughs> yeah. 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 And even I remember stuff like, um, like, Like, so I got my tattoo, it was early twenties. And I remember like visiting my grandparents with my mom and, and my grandparents being so against tattoos. And I remember one time I got like gum on my shoe and I had this pressure of not letting my grandparents see my lower back tattoo. Mm. So like my mom had to like help me remove the gum because we were both so anxious about my grandparents seeing the tattoo and like overreacting about it, you know? Yeah. Oh my but God. That one I regret. The one I have now I'm down with. What, there uh, you go. what about, what about you? What, uh, tattoo stories do you have? So interesting. Well, so first of all, I relate pretty hard to like the fear of needles. Like I had, oh. when you were talking about hating needles, like I was a terrible patient at the doctor when I was a kid, <laughs> like there was so much negotiation yes! going on Yes. and just like, just crying and crying and crying. Like, and I'm, I'll never forget my best friend was just, we were the opposites in so many ways. And she, she like, there was one time when we were, we were happened to be there at the same time to get shots. And she came out from the, you know, the, she like holding a lollipop. She's like, it was fine. You're going to be fine. We were like six. Yeah. And she, we were like eight. We were a little older. It was still kids. Right. And she's like mm-hmm. talking me down from a ledge at eight. Oh, God. And I'm just like, <laughs> I was bawling. I was yes. a total mess. So yes. I, I hear you on the hatred of needles. I still hate needles. I have to, I have a whole practice before I get a needle for anything. I'm like, right. I need to seriously you gotta do your practices. In. Yeah. Didn't have yes. any practices as an eight-year-old. No. Um, didn't know yoga it's for many years after that. Anyway. No. Um, so related hard to that. Um yeah. When I got my ears pierced, I was seven. Mm. So like, again, I don't remember having actual feelings of resentment. Maybe if I were 10 or 11, like mm-hmm. you, I might've yeah. been like, why didn't I do this as a baby? Because I got the same message. It was like, all my friends had their ears yes. pierced or they were wearing the fake earrings yes. in their ears. And I was like, I really want the real thing. Like even I, from a young age, I'm like, I felt that competition a little mm-hmm. bit. Like I need the real thing. So we went to the local jeweler who I knew she it was like, this shop was like down the street practically from my parents' house. And so like, these were people I knew to a certain extent, my mom was always in and out of this jeweler. And I, so I felt somewhat safe with her, you know? Right. And I remember like not having a full grasp that this gun was going to shove a hole in my ear. It was yes. like, as a seven-year-old, like just logically didn't have 
the understanding, like there's going to be a metal object attached to your ear. They're going to literally shoot you in the ear yes. with this earring. Yes. And it, I don't really remember it being explained to me. Either. Right. With the it earring kind of, that you chose. Right. <laughs> like, Actually, no, it, it was like everybody oh. got the standard stud, like cubic zirconia stud. Oh. It had a gold. I think it was a real gold, like mm -hmm. metal, you know, gold, whatever. What the hell's the word? Stick thing that goes through the ear. I think it's stick thing. Yes. It's definitely a stick thing. That's the, <laughs> that's the technical term. Ask any jeweler. They'll, they'll call it the stick thing. Yeah. Um, but they preload the same earring for everybody who's getting their ears pressed ah. for the first time, or at least that they did it at this door that way. Yeah. And so with no context or conversation, it was just like, ka -ching! I was like, ah! so I just screamed, like lost my damn mind. And yeah. then it was and like, then you have to do another. <laughs> yeah, well, I was like out the door. I'm like, we're done, we're done. And then my mom had to like, basically like drag me back in. I mean, she didn't drag me. She was kind of just like, listen, you wanted this. Yeah. Yes. It hurt. You're crying because it hurt. I get it. But you either go home with one hole <laughs> or you, you know, squeeze my hand, you cry, you scream, let it out, but we're going to mm -hmm. just ching one more and let, and then we're done. And it's going to, we're going to go home. I'm going to get ice on. She, I mean, my mom knew how to talk to me when I was a kid Yeah, I mean, and now still she's amazing, but I just was like, okay. You know, like she like got me back in the chair and I was just like freaking out. But then of course, because I knew what it felt like, it didn't hurt as much. Right. Cause I you still were cried. Expecting. I was still upset, but I had more understanding of what it was going to feel like. Right. 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 So that was sort of traumatic. Yes. Um, and then Wait, you know, school, yeah, I'm just thinking how stressful it must be for the ear piercer. Oh my God, I know. She was very calm. I will yeah. say, I remember even, I mean, even as a seven, eight be. year old, she was extremely calm. She was so calm. I but will even like the oh. overthinking of getting it even oh, like, God. can you imagine looking the ears over and over and over again? But it's like, yeah. what? I don't even know if my lobes are like identical. Right. Like, a lot of people's aren't. Right. So it's like, right. And then you have children getting hysterical and you got to be calm. Yeah. You know, it's like, I just Oof. had this moment of like, I could never be an ear piercer. Oh my God. No. Or a yeah. tattooer could never. No. My no. anxiety would never allow no. for that. Is it no too way. hard? Is it not hard enough? Like I'd be the one fainting. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, here we go. <laughs> I'd be knocked out. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So like in high school, you know, everyone, I said my ears are pierced and that was mm -hmm. it for the longest time. And then in high school, like you had said before, I don't know, remember which came first, the belly button or the cartilage <laughs> earring. Oh. Cause that was the other like cool in trendy yes. thing. It was like, everyone was doing the, if they didn't uh -huh. have multiple, yeah, I never wanted more to my lobes or down here, mm -hmm. but then like one of my best friends was like, I'm doing the cartilage. So I was like, okay. Like we <sighs> basically fed each other. Like we did yes. what she did. I did what I did. She did. And so we both went to, God, I think it was like Claire's. It was some yes. like yep. terrible place. Yep. And got our car. That is like a done. 16 year old doing the ear oh piercing. God, I know. Yeah, yeah. She couldn't have been more than like 22. If I'm, <laughs> if I was lucky, she was 22. Yeah. And I was like 15, six. I don't know. I don't even remember how old I was, but it was high school. And that definitely got infected. Like, but I oh. kept it. I kept, I would just like try to clean it out as often God. as possible, but it was disgusting. It was like red all the time. Oh. It turned purple oh for God. a while. Oh my God. And I just got used to it being numb. I was just like, oh. I'm sorry to feel this part of my ear. Like no big deal. <laughs> Oh God. Oh, oh my God. God. Stupid shit we did, oh my God. Honestly. And I just thought about how you like, you don't like people touching your ears. No. That's like an added layer. Maybe that's why I, I didn't used to hate it like that. <gasps> I wonder, I don't know. I was traumatized when, when I got my lobes done, yeah. but like, I don't really know if that had seemed to me that the touching is just so benign to most mm. people mm -hmm. that I feel like they're not related, mm. but maybe okay. they are, who knows? Okay. I don't know. I can't say for certain. Can't okay. Say for certain. Anyway. So Ooh. got that done. In fact, did the whatever. cartilage hurt? I was always afraid it hurt of that. so bad. It yeah. Hurts. It yeah, was a nightmare. Was not, no. It was a I nightmare. Not I think that's why one. I held onto it for so long. I was like, <laughs> this hurts so bad. I need to keep it. I did the belly button. Belly button, um, again, with, with that same friend. Um, no apprentice. No apprentice. Everybody <laughs> was legit except for maybe the Claire's person. She, But she wasn't an apprentice because, well, whatever. So for the belly button, it was like the, the rod hurt way more than, right? Like the, um, whatever they do first. 
mm-hmm. before they actually pierce the hole. You mean like when they pinch with the circle thing? That's it. The pincher. The yeah. pincher. That yeah. hurts so bad. Yeah. That like and then, the actual hole oh. didn't hurt anywhere near as bad. Oh. So I was like, I mean, oh, I'm like compared to the pincher, that was nothing. Oh. So that was pretty. I actually handled that really well. I felt okay. like. But because we were 16, we had to have her mom with us. Yeah. Yep. So we had to go to, I forgot. I think we went to a real jeweler for that one too. It wasn't like at some shady place and it wasn't at a tattoo <laughs> parlor either. Or maybe it was, I honestly don't remember, but I do remember her mom being there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love, she was amazing. Um, it was like her mom and my mom. Like I remember like we had to like work each other up to ask our moms right. if we could have it. Yes. And then like, we were like, okay, like we were on the phone. I'm like, I'm going to go do it right now. And she was like, okay, I'm going to go do it right now. Call me back as soon as it's yes! done. Yo. So like, I went and talked to my mom and like, she was like, I got to talk to your dad about it. Cause that's how they, that's how they do. Mm-hmm. And so I called my friend back. I'm like, I'm like, we have to wait on my dad. We're waiting on my dad. It's like, it was a whole thing. <laughs> so they agreed. It was fine. Um, so, but then her mom and my mom were like, who's going to go, you know, mm-hmm. and I don't remember how it got decided, but anyway, her mom came. So that was fine. And then after my 21st birthday, I had like been, my sister has a couple of tattoos. Yeah. Um, and I had been like, I feel like I was just like talking to her about it. You know, it was just kind of like, Oh, like, that'd be cool. Maybe one day. And I like, I, you know, I've always idolized my sister always. And so like, she like egged me on in just the right way that I was kind of just like, okay, let's just go right now and do it. She was like, Oh really? Really? Right now. I was like, yeah. Okay. Sure. Let's just, let's go. So we went to a place in my, in my town where I grew up. They were, they'd been there for 20 years at the time. Now it's been even longer than that, obviously. Um, they had a good reputation as good as I freaking knew. I didn't know anything about reputations for tattoo shops. <laughs> yeah. And she didn't, I mean, so I feel like, I don't remember. She had like people she knew did her tattoos. And like, because this was an impulsive decision, it was mm-hmm. kind of like, we don't have time for like researching and figuring it out. Yeah. Or, or like, any let's anxiety. Make- like, right. I feel like impulsivity it was helps. It helped, right? It totally helped. I was stressed though when I got there because then it was like, I knew what I wanted. And so I had the guy draw it up and I was just like, I remember very vividly just like shaking and like my heart was, I thought it was just going to explode out of my chest. Mm -hmm, And so mm -hmm. I get behind this like barn door. I don't know if like a lot of tattoo shops do this, but like it almost looked like dressing room stalls that like you went into like these little rooms and they had half doors like at a saloon in like a Western. Okay. Like legit. It was like, you push the door open. (laughs) Like I felt like I was in a saloon. It was a tiny little room though, like closet side, like lesson. So my sister had to, she was on the other side of these like half doors. Mm -hmm. So the guy is in there and it's my tattoos on my on my lower back too, but it's on the right side. <laughs> it's on the, the center. I refuse to do the full tramp so stamp. Smart. You're so smart. I needed it to be off to the side a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, thank God I had a little bit of foresight for that back then. And it's, again, it's really small. It's literally only two lines is my astrological sign. And so they, the guy starts tattooing me and I start screaming. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Yeah. So like at first it was like my sing songy kind of scream. And so my sister was like, yeah, yeah. Scream it out. <laughs> like she, she was like supportive, you know, thankfully you, it was like, like give us, a taste I, I will, of- I will, okay. I will. Okay. Okay. Thankfully this was like the middle of the day. Nobody else was in the shop. Okay. Okay. Cause if anyone else was in the shop, I'm sure they would have been like, you got to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> but so I am like in the, in the beginning, I'm kind of like, ah, like, like lightly, like, yeah. Ah. <laughs> So now, and then that escalates <laughs> as the tattoo continues to like, ah, I don't want to scream directly at the record. I am legit. Like I've never been pregnant. Thank God. But it feels like I'm labor screaming. Oh my God. You're just laying on your I'm stomach just in the screaming. chair. Screaming. And the guy is just like, so he stops. He's like, okay. He's like, Do you, are you okay? You, and so as soon as he stopped, I stopped screaming. It was like, it was like ripping a bandit off. I was like, yeah. And then I was back to normal. I'm like, what? What's up, guy? What's up? I'm like, this is just what I need to do to get through this. And he was like, okay. He's like, because it's quiet in here, you go ahead. But we're almost done. You can scream. So he like, let I'm me doing yell. my extended exhale. <laughs> <laughs> Which again, I had barely any tools for. Yeah. Oh my God. I'd only been in yoga for a couple of years. And like, it, it was like college yoga. It was yeah. not like, let's talk Applicable about why you should be. Yeah. yeah. 
zero connection to the real life practice. So, oh man, I was just, it was over in less than five minutes. It was really short. Yeah, right. And I was just like, after I was like, okay, like that was fine. Like I did all the things and you know, I could look back on it okay, and laugh. That was fine. <laughs> you know, like I just needed to scream and like, I was given permission to scream. <laughs> he gave me permission. I guess if he was like, you can't scream, I would have found something else. I don't even know what I would have done. Yeah. But like, so like it really helped that I didn't have time. Cause this is an aside for my anxiety is the, mm-hmm. the longer I wait. Yes. The more likely I am to not only be anxious, but then just, just never do something. Yes. Yes. So like, if we're going like, I don't like rides at all. I don't like amusement parks. And but like mm. whenever in the past, whenever we'd go to like Disney world or mm-hmm. great adventure or any of the Hershey park, any of the, you know, adventure parks, mm-hmm. anytime I had to wait on a line for more than like 60 seconds, I yeah. had extreme anxiety. And then it was just the whole time yeah. yep. telling Adam that we were going to die, telling yep. him that I loved him so much. And then yep. I would see him on the other side. Like literally he'd be mm-hmm. holding me and like talking me down from a ledge. Like I probably was like these people around me online were probably like, Oh my God, this bitch needs to calm down. She's crazy. <laughs> and so like, there'd be some rides where They're probably like, Oh my God, are we going to die? <laughs> Maybe some of them. Yeah. I probably didn't help some of their anxiety potentially. And I wasn't quiet about it either. I was like, we're about to die. Like, so if I have to wait, it's yes. not going to happen. Or yes. I'm going to be in such a state where like, it's, it's going to build really, it up. Exactly. Yeah. So much energy did be too much energy in my body. So it was so helpful that it was like, let's just go, let's do it. Let's go yes. right now. And then like, no thought, we're just going to go to the place that's open. They're open full time. It's not like you have to make an appointment with a tattooer. Yes. Right. Or at least it wasn't like that at the time. Yes. I mean, it's possible that nobody would have been available that I, right. and then I would have had to leave or wait, which if it had been like that, I probably mm-hmm. wouldn't have gotten it at least mm-hmm. not that day, but it all <laughs> it worked out. And yeah, so that's there. And it's so funny because, um, I'm approaching my 40th birthday and yeah. I really, I really want another tattoo. And I've been planning for this one. Like I, I, cause for a long time, for the past, like 10 years, I've been grappling with wanting a second tattoo, mm-hmm. but I've had a lot of anxiety just about like, how, how will I handle it? This mm-hmm. go around, will it be better? Will it be worse? Will I, you know, mm-hmm. I'm older, I have more tools, more lived experience. I really, I have a stronger desire for this design and whatever. Um, and so there's that, but then it's like the planning of, and so for a long time, it was like, okay, what exactly do I want? And so it took me literal years to figure out exactly what I wanted. Okay. How do, where do I want it to be? That was the biggest thing. It was like, that's a huge anxiety, like deciding where something's going to live for the rest of your life on your yeah. body. So yeah. like figuring that out, it's been a process. And so I feel comfortable with, you know, where I want it and all the things. And so it's just going to be a matter of like, making the appointment and going kind of thing, mm-hmm. which like even just talking about it right now, I have light anxiety. So like, it's going to be a little bit of like, you've got this and a lot of positive self-talk Yeah, eventually when I, when I eventually actually wind up in the chair, but like, it's taken me this long to like work through the anxiety of yes. like deciding because I didn't think very hard about what I wanted when I was 21. <clears throat> right. Luckily, I'm still very much okay with that and this location. So mm-hmm. like, I'm okay with all the, I got lucky with the choices I made then, you know, but like now I feel really solid and good. It was like, it was still impulsive. It could have wound up really bad for me. Right. Yes. But like, happy with it. It's, it's all good. And now for round two, we'll see how it goes. I don't think it's going to be peaceful or meditative, but I've had a lot more conversations with people with tattoos. Mm-hmm. I've talked to uh, my friend Scott and my book club told me about this special numbing cream that I'm going to be purchasing for sure that I need to, that I'm going to have to use like things I didn't even think about that were right. available to me back then may or maybe weren't available and as good, but like, right. That are available to me. So there's that, you so, know, so that's kind of the journey. I, I have, I have a question. So yeah. you know how I acknowledge that apparently it's not common for someone to faint on the chair. Yeah. Do you think it's common for someone to scream on the chair? <laughs> I mean, it seems logical to me. It was really painful. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm sure that the tattooer didn't appreciate it. <laughs> like when Ryan was like, I'll let, you know, the, uh, the tattooer choose the music because yes. you want them to be in the zone. It's like, oh man, I'm taking notes. Like that's right. a really good idea. I never even thought of that. Like maybe I'm bringing headphones. 
yes. for myself. Yes. Yes. Oh, right. Oh, goodness. Don't yeah. talk to the tattooer. Make sure they're focused and stuff and yeah, all the things. But it's stressful. Yeah. But it's like, does it keep you from doing it? I don't right. know. And part of me is like, now that I'm older, it feels like it should be easier. But part of me is also jaded and and seen almost too much mm-hmm. <laughs> in a way. And so like, because of the lack of impulsivity, I actually feel like I have more anxiety leading up now. Yeah. That's why yeah. it's taken this long. Yeah. Right. You know? Because you really have the choice. And of course you had the right. choice then, but impulsivity makes us like excited and blind to our other choices. We're just like, totally yes, let's do it. 100%, 100%. Yeah. 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 And I think it was like, when I asked my sister about the pain, like again, so many years ago, she was just like, yeah, it'll hurt. It'll, it's not going to feel comfortable, but you'll be fine. <laughs> like we both just handle pain very differently. Yes. Yeah. And it's so funny because like I have, I'm, I have endometriosis. I've suffered from extreme, um, period cramps mm-hmm. and pain, like to the point where like cysts are rupturing in my body, like, yeah. you know, over the course of my, you know, life as a woman. Right. And so like those types of pains I've been able to navigate for so yep. many years. It like to some people they're like, how the F do you deal with that? And I'm like, because I've gotten used to dealing with it. Like I've just right. had no choice. Right. And I found what supports me and I know the ritual I need to do to get through it. And yes. so it's like, we all have our strengths yes. and what some people perceive to be like easy peasy it may mm-hmm. not be easy peasy for you. What, what, what your pain threshold is like for that situation may be very, very different from mine. Right. No, doesn't make right. you weaker or stronger. It's kind of just like different. Right. And, and you're opting in. I mean, that's the thing is like, we're talking about like anxiety and piercings and tattoos, but it's yeah. like induced anxiety. Yeah. It's like opting in to be uncomfortable. You know, and then like the pre-planning before it all goes down, right? As opposed to like just getting your period and having to deal with that in the moment and the pain and the discomfort and all of that. It's like, no, I'm actively choosing to get needles into my body. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You say it like that. It's like, maybe I won't do this. (laughs) Well, I mean, as someone who has had two tattoos, one in their twenties and one in their thirties, the second one was so much better. It was yeah. so much better. Like and more, I, more understanding of what you're dealing with going into it. Yes. And we have tools. Like I'm right. telling you that extended exhale was my blessing. It was yeah. like, I just did that a number of times. And I, I mean, I do that. I bring it back to getting like shots and dr- getting our blood taken. Yeah. That is my go-to practice is just really long, multiple extended exhales. And most of the time, not looking at that needle, right? No. Like I God, look no. the other way. And I do my breaths and usually they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, don't, don't, don't talk, talk to me. To me. Yes, I'm trying to do my breathing. <laughs> that's how I feel too. Do not ask me questions. Yeah, yes. I don't want to have a conversation yes. with you. I am in a zone and I don't yeah. want you in my zone. <laughs> read, read the room yes. person. I am yeah. more than okay. I am preventing myself from fainting. Right. Or I'm screaming. Breathing. Yeah. Or screaming. Right. Or vomiting or <laughs> whatever else happened for you. I will yeah. never speak of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm I am still embarrassed to this day of that these time. Are, these are the days <laughs> to remember. <laughs> the days of fainting in a tattoo chair, screaming too. <laughs> oh man. Oh my gosh. Um so yeah, extended exhales, that's definitely a new that right. That's that's going to support me. I know it will because it does in every situation of discomfort, whether it be yeah. physical or emotional. So I know I'll be I'll be going towards that. Yeah. When it's time. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, and also just like you said, it's like it's a choice I'm making. It's a conscious choice. There's lo- the lack of impulsivity mm-hmm. helps with the anxiety when you get a little bit older, you can yeah. be a little bit more planned in your process. And if you're younger and you're like considering tattoos or piercings, that's awesome. Right. Maybe take the time to look into it. Where are you going? Who's tattooing you? Hope they're not an apprentice. And if they are, do they have a trained professional right behind them? Doesn't right? matter. Guiding them. Doesn't matter. I have Doesn't the trained professional. Right don't do it. Them. Okay. Fair enough. Doesn't fair matter. enough. Don't I want to be kind to the apprentices that, that need have to, to get their hours and need to learn. Yes. So maybe if a professional is extremely close (laughs) and maybe if the apprentice has had months and months of experience before getting to you, make sure they've actually done something like a belly button piercing before. Oh God. Yeah. Sounds awful. You're like the guy's like drilling. Yes. Oh, so you all can't see, but we are like 
corkscrew hand corkscrew handing what happened when he tried to get it the rest of the way yeah oh god so awful yeah it was awful was awful okay yeah what we're saying warriors is that this mundane anxiety maybe isn't universal you know right, right. maybe but less universal what i think we're saying is that impulsive impulsivity can decrease anxiety mm-hmm. and lead to cool and fun stories <laughs> Even if the outcome of said <laughs> situation isn't the best. Yeah. And that sometimes you just got to be impulsive and do it. That's true. And that when you sit in the space of overthinking anxiety, you might try to convince you all the reasons why you shouldn't do it. Right. So maybe you meet it halfway, right? Maybe you're not so super impulsive and maybe you're not, you try to live in the space of like somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Of not being over analytical about every literal detail yep. and also not being like, cool, I want that thing. Let me just go do it. Especially when we're yes. talking about, you know, doing something to your physical body. Mm-hmm. Right. You should yes. take a little bit more consideration without overthinking it. Yes. Somewhere some happy medium exists, I think. Yes. Not for us in that moment, but no. as a, as parting wisdom to all the younger warriors who are interested in tattooing or piercing or have who've experienced it and maybe maybe resonate with anything we're saying um yeah what how does this show up for you mm-hmm. right is this a mundane anxiety for you is it a very real anxiety for you do you have anxiety listening to us talking about the concept of tattooing and piercing? yes maybe you're very anti for one reason or another and if so awesome good for you good mm-hmm. good for you for knowing that about yourself more self-awareness is better. Always. Yeah. Can't hurt. Always. Know yourself. Hurt. Know yourself. Yeah. And then think about like, what are the ways that you can calm and support your nervous system through right. tattooing and piercing if you choose to get them? Or yeah. if you did, if you're thinking about it in hindsight, did you have any tools in the moment? What tools did you wish you had? Yeah. If you choose to get something in the future, what do you think your go-tos might be? Maybe right. it's finding something soothing to listen to. Um, maybe it's having a conversation with the person that's tattooing you or piercing you. Mm-hmm. Maybe that makes you feel better. Like I like sometimes when I'm getting my massage every month, sometimes I'm in a chatty mood more yeah. often than not. I'm in a very much leave me alone. Don't talk to me mood. Right. And like, you kind of maybe make sure you're driving with the person's energy, right? Like mm-hmm. when body work, this is body work. And so you should make sure your energy kind of jives with this person's energy too, mm-hmm. before you decide to go with them for these types of services. Yeah. Um, so maybe there's some pre-planning that you can do to make yourself, to set yourself up for the most success while also actively trying not to be overly impulsive with just like go, go, go without thinking. Yes. And if you know someone that's overly impulsive, hopefully at some point they can look back and laugh at the stuff they (laughs) impulse impulsively did. (laughs) That's true. And it's not necessarily permanent right now. There are ways to, you can remove the piercing. You can heal these parts of your body. You can get, you know, tattoos tattooed over. If you're unhappy with your impulsive choice from your Mm -hmm. early twenties, or you can get it removed, right? There are choices that you have. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Warriors. Well, we hope that you gained any kind of <laughs> maybe just some some Anything. you know chuckles listening to us yeah talk yeah. about the ways that we apparently it's okay to scream <laughs> and faint while getting these things done well it's okay to us it, it is. might not be normal it may not be normal i'm going to go yeah. with it's not neither of us are very normal so no. i think yeah. i think that's one of our good qualities is not yeah. being normal yeah i can claim fainting during a tattoo i mean how many people that got tattoos can claim that Hmm. That's true. Maybe we should look up the stats on that. There probably are some. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Warriors. Well, thank you so much for being with us this week. Um, I think we have a joint win of the week. Have a win of the week. Win of the week. A Mabby win of the week. Mabby win of the week. We do. Got the best (laughs) message from a friend. Yeah. So, um, I had told a friend about our podcast and, um, our friend, just our friend, my friend just started listening. He'll become your friend too. At some point he'll be a guest on the show. We'll all be friends. Um, just started listening and started from episode one. Right. And I was like, I mean, that's how I would start. I feel like you got to start from the beginning. Right. But it depends on the podcast, but yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, so 
you know, I was like, when, when he said, oh, I'm starting from episode one, a little part of me cringed. And I was like, oh, we we're a little awkward at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm and, glad you told him that. Yeah. Oh, don't. And he, so he was like, I don't think it comes off cross awkward at all. He was like, so I'm reading a text from him. So he said, you both create a good space, like sitting and chatting with a friend and everyone is invited. I got some nice little phrases I'll probably steal for my own practice. And so I was like, oh, what's stuck with you? And so he wrote back and he was like, I think it's when you are explaining the term anxiety warriors and how we can be anxious, but strong and worried, but brave. It's nice and easy language to use with little people and myself. And it gets the message across. I just liked it. Smiley face. Mm. And so yeah, that felt Such like a win. A win. So yeah. it's, it warms my heart so much, especially, I mean, look, he's your friend. So I'm sure he's being kind to a certain extent, but he didn't need to listen and he didn't need to share his feelings on it at all. Right. He could exactly. have just been like, it was cool. Like, yeah, but to give you work. all those details, right. He gave, he chose to give you all those details. And so like, yeah, do I feel kind of cringy about our early episodes? Yes. Like a little bit, but we also had no idea what we were doing. And in so many ways we still don't. So right. like, let's just honor where we, where we came from and how far we have come. And it mm -hmm. just feels like such a full circle moment to be like a year and a half into this podcasting journey and to be hearing from someone that just started with episode one and didn't think it was a total shit show. Yeah. <laughs> so that yeah. was awesome. I mean, I was like, oh, I'm cringing. Maybe you should start a little later. And he was like, no, I'm starting from the beginning. And he I sent a picture that. of him like listening. And yeah, it was, it was cool. It was, it was awesome. And it was heartwarming. And it was, it was nice to know that, you know, we were offering helpful things even in our first few episodes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. That's such a, such an awesome one. Mm -hmm. That's such an awesome win that we share. We can both share in it. Cause even though you received that message, it was about our show. And so exactly that makes it a maybe win of the week, win of the week. <laughs> Warriors definitely write in to tell us how much you love our singing. If yes. you feel adversely about our singing, you should probably just definitely keep it to yourself. But if you love it, please tell us you love it. Also, if you have anxiety singing, um, know that I can speak for me. Um, I have anxiety singing and yet I still do it. Amen. Mm -hmm. I do it with my students. I do it by myself. I do it in the car. I do mm -hmm. it in front of people. I don't care. I do it at karaoke randomly, usually with alcohol, but still. <laughs> we do it with strangers on podcasts. Yeah. It's, it's very, it's a great, like break down the walls. Yes. Activity. Cause I am very singing, insecure about singing. Especially, right. Especially cause we sing badly. I feel like we're opening the door for everyone to Embrace permission to singing. sing however it feels good for you yes and if you sing great we'll tell you it's really great <laughs> and then be jealous and then ask and then for jealous. if you have any recommendations for singing coaches mm, there you go yeah maybe not for me I, I don't think i don't think a coach could help me i'd probably drive them to drink themselves <laughs> um okay warriors we love you so much thanks for being with us if you would like to connect Join us over on Instagram. We're at Anxiety Warriors Podcast, or you can shoot us an email at Anxiety Warriors Podcast at gmail.com. Shout out your wins of the week. Give us some topic ideas. Or if you think you'd be, you'd be a great fit as a guest on our show, let us know. Let's connect mm -hmm. and hear your story. Please take two seconds and smash that five-star rating on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you tune in. Leave us a quick review or a long review. We love them all equally. Um, and like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have yes. most of our episodes uploaded over there. They do take a really long time to upload. So be patient. <laughs> yes. They're not always uh, up to date. <laughs> not always quite up to date, but Abby, Abby is man. She's a rock star. She does all the uploading and it takes a long time that we don't get paid for. So there's that. And if you can take two seconds and you're interested in buying some anxiety warriors podcast swag, maybe more than two mm -hmm. seconds, take two seconds to smash the link, but spend your few minutes, maybe like looking through the site. Our threadless shop has so much kick-ass merch. Um, you can represent our show and support us by grabbing yourself or your fellow warriors, something fun mm -hmm. from our shop. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I didn't hit all the things. I, I don't know it. if there was another one or not. Nope, that's it. <laughs> all right. So thank you all so much for going on this journey with us. We are so grateful that we get to do this with you. Till next time. 